enough, one of the most asked questions I get on the channel is how do you clean your car up because it's on the beach so often. This is as good a time as any to show you guys because I've been on Fraser for a week. As you can see, it's baked on, haven't cleaned it at all yet. <laughs> it's a bit of a nightmare. And the underbody wash at Rainbow Beach was broken. So yeah, it is 100% Fraser blasted ready to rumble let's do this it's important to mention i'm not trying to be some professional bloke telling you how to clean your car or what's right and wrong I'm just doing this because people have asked me how i do it and how it stayed in such good condition just remember that like every car is different this will help you a lot if you've got this in navara but in my opinion it's important to do the underbody wash almost every time you clean your car i think that's the key for me even if i haven't been off road and i'm just washing the vehicle for the sake of it i still do this underbody routine just a quick version of it so i normally start for chassis so yeah i'll show you how i do that with mine the nissans have a chassis that's open at the end here as you can see Basically, it's very easy for me to aim the hose straight through and you'll be able to see the sand just pour out of the holes in the bottom. It's important to do it from the rear and from the front. Flush the sand both ways. If you want to spend at least two minutes either way, and you'll see what I mean, the sand will flow out of the holes in the chassis. Once it's clean flowing water, you kind of, that's a good sign that you've got most of it. Funny thing is, you can come back tomorrow when it's dry, put your finger in and there'll still be, <laughs> this will still be sandy. So, you know what I mean, you can just, that's why I do it every time I wash the car. Now I just remembered, if you've got a tub, if you've got the style side on your truck still and you have the, the rear step on the back, which they all come with, you won't actually be able to see the back of that rail. But you can get to it in that one, that one, you just have to angle the hose down into that. And it effectively does the same thing. I mean, you can spray backwards through that one as well and not that much gets caught in the rear, but... We also have these cross members, which are just circular. So the trick is to kind of get your hose on the angle. You can also just take the end off the hose and slam the end of the hose in there and walk away. Just let it run for 10 minutes or so. Send the water back the other way down the chassis. It does help sometimes if you turn a wheel. I just happen to have it turned. Chassis has this hole there. If you aim your hose right in for a couple of minutes, It'll eventually become clear coming out. Now, I like to do it from this one as well because it gives it a different angle. The other side, you see the same hole here. Fine when you're doing it yourself you just go front back front back because the sand kind of gets pushed left and right until it comes out until it doesn't kick back at you and you see it you'll be able to look down there uh, to get the bulk of it off i highly recommend using the underbody wash the one that's coming off double island the best bloody one i've ever used the rainbow beach one doesn't seem to be as powerful but either way it's still worth i know they're a little bit expensive but it's worth spending the money on it is everywhere on your car. <laughs> Gotta merch up. Them. Gotta get merched up. <laughs> the underbody wash is so good because like trying to get this tray clean is basically impossible with a hose, which is why most people will choose to get an alloy tray built over a steel tray so it doesn't rust. In my experience the chassis rail is the most important because my pathfinder that <laughs> bottom of the chassis rail just rusted out and it was turned into a c-section chassis although that was a very old vehicle and I didn't have it most of its life. Basically after spending considerable time on your chassis making sure it's got the bulk out just want to run under there and just get all the visual sand off that you can see. Next time you wash your car you basically want to do that again really quick and just run 30 seconds of water down the chassis rail and you'll find more sand will probably come out next time as well. But so now we just want to run over everything underneath that you can see and just get the vis visual sand off. Another sneaky spot on Nissan's, the top of the strut tower here, if you can see, it just fills up with sand. <laughs> so get your hose in there and blast out the sand as best as possible because, well, maybe for me it's worse because I've got coil cones and the, there's no way for the sand to get out. But 
still good for you to blast the sand out of there. Same actually goes for the top of the front, the front coil towers. The sand sits on top of that as well. So yeah, that's just some sneaky places I found it sitting when I keep changing suspension. <laughs> just try and blast the hose in there. Some, this is the part where most people like to run the sprinkler under there for half an hour or so. Like to, it just lets the water drip and run and try and get the sand off. But yeah, again, the, the underbody wash, if you pay for that, normally normally takes all that work out of it for you. Normally pop the bonnet now because that's where it all goes, sand sits everywhere. Sneaky under the bonnet. You can see how savage is it sand gets sticky and yuck. The bash plates and all the plates under there. There's sand sitting on it. See how from this side you can see to that side on the inside and above the chassis. Aim up onto the other side and then when you're on this, that side you do the same to this side. Oh, I come to do the fun part mate. Yeah. You love I've washing cars. <laughs> yeah, don't don't do this when it's hot. Is there any tips? Have you tried any tips? Yeah, have you got any motor cleaning tips? You're actually good at it. And you can like, mine are actually alloy. Most of my bash plates are alloy, so they won't. Well, who did you, who did you bash plate? I don't even know. They, did, they sent me the wrong ones. They sent me the middle and the back. I wanted the front and the middle. The front and the middle, yeah. That's why my front bash plate's stuck. <laughs> hey? Did you get bogged? I didn't, no. Oh, didn't it actually, it floated over everything very easily. On the guy that I used the front locker. A bit sneaky. Oh, yeah. But everyone else was getting bogged as the usual, so. It's quite confusing. I don't know. It's been about, I don't know, probably a good 45 minutes into it and no visible sand while wet. You'll see when it dries, it'll probably be a bit more up here. But yeah, basically from this point on, just your normal car wash over the top. Gonna foam it up really good, get all the sold off properly. Can you be quiet? You're very noisy. Okay, I've got the bulk of it off underneath is all done. So I'm gonna wait till this afternoon when it's not so hot and finish this off. Okay, it's pretty hot still, but I thought I'd get into it. I know the top of the tent probably isn't all that important for the tent, but if you leave all the sold up there, the next time it rains, it all drips over your car anyway. So I kind of got to clean the top of that as well. Plus it keeps it nice. And I'm not sure if you're technically allowed to stand on it, but it takes my weight fine, so. Another thing I think I kind of fluked is the alloy wheels have stayed in really good condition for me. And I think it's just because I've always kept them clean. Basically, you'll find if you don't look after the polished look, it'll corrode and eventually not look all that great. Biggest tip I have for anyone is to, if you want a vehicle that's on the beach constantly like this one, do the underbody clean every time you clean your car. Not to this degree, just once over 30 seconds up each chassis rail sort of thing and just have a look under there. Because I've got lots of nooks and crannies, you know, the sliders, the snorkel, always stuff in the way, just use one of these, slide your hand in there, wrap it around your door handles and everything. Just use a long handle to help reach because it's, you know, tall four wheel drive. I have the SL model Navara which comes with vinyl. <laughs> in my opinion, that's actually better than carpet. Especially if you're on the beach all the time because you can literally just vacuum it straight off. I don't have any seat covers at the moment. Everything else in here is stock, so basically you know have a drill. Vacuum it all, wipe down all the dust off the plastics. That's basically about it. If you have any questions or you want to leave tips in the comments down below for anyone else watching this or obviously there's a thousand tips and ways to do beach cleaning so yeah feel free to leave as many comments just to help anyone else out you know. A bunch of other things you can do on top of just being high maintenance um, like the rust proofing. It all helps. I'm not really the informative off-road channel <laughs> of sorts. There's plenty of really good channels out there doing this stuff but this is a really highly requested video. Um, I think just because everyone sees how often I'm on the beach. If you want me to go through anything else, I'm sure there's plenty of questions about a lot of things. Just let me know. If I get enough requests, I'll do another video on it. Don't mind the rust on the sliders. That just means that you use your car. What do you reckon? It's better to have shiny brand new sliders or to have rusty scratched up ones. Okay, this is a completely different day, but I thought it'd probably worth showing you guys. Yeah, pretty cool, but there's a bit of setup involved and you need a gurney and power nearby and all that, so. Look, 
like, I'm not gonna lie, you feel like a boss using this thing. <laughs> <laughs>